Did you know that there is a short window of opportunity in the patient life cycle that most practice owners either don't know about or just ignore in which you can make massive improvements to cancellation rate, drop off rate, and ultimately customer lifetime value. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what that is and share three or four very simple strategies that you can implement right away to benefit your practice and your patients. Hi, I'm Jared Carter. Thank you so much for joining today's episode. I'm a physical therapist, a cash-based practice owner, and the creator of the Private Pay Profit Formula. I help my colleagues just like you to create out-of-network concierge or cash-based practices so you can end reliance on greedy insurance companies, provide a level of care you are ultimately proud of, and reclaim your profits in your future. So if you're new here, I really suggest you subscribe because I put trainings out like this quite frequently and they always have a free resource associated with them designed to help you implement and get results faster. And the free resource today are the exact emails and videos that I'm going to teach you about in this video so you can quickly insert those into your practice and start getting these results right away. Okay, let's dive in. First and foremost, what opportunity, what time frame am I talking about? It's the time frame right before someone comes in for their first visit at your practice. And these strategies are all about removing friction or frustration from the common things that take place in most healthcare practices, as well as adding in some things that add character and personality and, and give a bit of a wow and overall experience before the person has actually showed up. And finally, it's going to remove a lot of the hesitance that many patients feel. We don't recognize it, but many patients feel when they're starting out with a new healthcare provider. So I don't know about you, but quite often in my life, as I've started out with a healthcare provider, I've spent some time on the phone explaining why I'm coming in, telling them about my symptoms or whatever, if they cared to ask. Um, but then I'll get intake paperwork, usually online now, where I'll be asked to repeat everything I've already told them on the phone. It's all blank and I'm supposed to put that all in there, right? Then I show up and while I'm waiting, they hand me a clipboard and say, please fill this out. And it's half of it or more are the same freaking questions that I've already answered twice now, right? And then finally, we get back in the room and usually after waiting way past my appointment time, the provider comes in and says, so what brings you in today? infuriating. Don't do that, please. And hopefully many watching this don't, are not already doing that. But there are a few simple workarounds and it goes so far when you tell a patient or when they recognize they're not going to have to repeat themselves and rewrite things over and over and that their provider actually informs themselves about this patient and about all the things that they already conveyed before coming into the room with them. It's huge and it's, it's actually really, really uncommon. This is an area of the total experience that you can easily set yourself apart and there's no reason not to do it. In my practice, we unfortunately don't have an EMR where we we can pre-insert our notes from the initial phone call into their intake paperwork so they can see that it's already you know, partially filled out. So what we do is we have a good in-depth conversation and we take notes from that conversation. We make sure, and I tell my staff, you got to make sure of this. And anytime we do call recordings, I'm listening. Are they saying this? Mrs. Jones, we've got you booked for X time on this day. In your inbox is an informational email with what to expect, directions, and there's going to be a link to our new patient paperwork. When you click over to that, just know that I've taken detailed notes from our conversation. You don't need to rewrite anything that you've already told me when it asks for the history of your current condition. If there's anything you forgot that you want to add, of course, feel free, but please know that your provider is going to have all of the notes from our conversation and they're going to be reading those and very familiar with what's going on before they walk in the door with you. And so you're not only saving them that time, like, oh, that's nice. Don't have to refill out, you know, a bunch of stuff already repeated, but you're telling them, hey, when you come here, your provider is already going to be super informed. They're not, you're not going to be repeating yourself. And there's a sense of, you know, we're going to take good care of you that is, is instilled in those statements. So we make sure that we say that ahead of time. And if you have an EMR that can pre-fill things with notes, great. But we just make sure that we pass those along to the provider in the EMR attached to their profile. And then part of our operating procedures before every new patient visit, that provider makes sure, even if they're a little behind on time, they make sure that they read those notes and 
you're not asking that person the same exact questions, you know, maybe they're asking clarifying questions, but they're not asking the same exact questions. It's very clear that they have read those notes that they've already given us. Tactic number two, remove insecurities and stress that you can about that first visit. They shouldn't be wondering what the building looks like, how to get there. Am I going to be there on time? Uh, you know, uh, what's going to happen? What should I be wearing? They should, all of those things should be answered ahead of time, not just on the phone, but in their onboarding emails, in their confirmation emails, in their reminder emails. We can put links to videos or a video that lets them know of all those things. Um, and again, in the in the downloadable for for this uh, episode at drjaredcarter.com forward slash episode 24, you'll get links to the video I'm talking about where I'm out in front of the, the building, my office building. I say, this is what the building looks like. There's a few entry points. This is the one you're looking for. When you come in, this is going to be the waiting area. We'll call you in. I'll walk into the room and I'll say, this is how your appointment's going to go. You're going to get to ask these questions. We're going to take you through these movements, this assessment. We'll get in some hands-on treatment. This is what you should wear. This is what you should expect. And any other frequently asked questions that we get, it's all in there. And so it really makes them feel to some degree that they've already gone through the process before, which lowers some of that anxiety and like not knowing what's going to happen. And it can go a really long way. Tactic three is to add some personality to your interactions, even if they're automated interactions. So we also send every patient, every new patient, after they've made a booking, a video on what we believe they deserve in their healthcare. And again, I'm in the downloadable at forward slash episode 24, you can get the link to that exact video. And it has some takeouts at the end. It's it's pretty funny, I think. And I would definitely check it out and think about how you might be able to reproduce something similar with your staff and show your personality. It doesn't have to be funny necessarily, but um, humor is a good thing. And then taking that a step further, you know, even the reminders that people get nowadays via text, those are sometimes not editable by your automated system, but sometimes a lot of times they are. And so like, why not use chat GPT? You know, to come up with an endless variety of humorous ways to remind someone about their appointment. Like people will literally be looking forward to seeing what that reminder is like before their next appointment. Stuff like that goes a long way. It takes, it sets you apart from all the other kind of commodity based services that people are getting elsewhere and really has people thinking about you, remembering you, showing up, not wanting to cancel and telling their friends. So add some humor and personality into those interactions anytime that you can throughout the plan of care, but even before they show up for the first visit. So there you have it. Three or four very simple things that you can immediately implement in your practice to maximize the show up rate for a first visit and the likelihood that they're going to continue from that point through the full plan of care, thereby maximizing customer lifetime value, the referrals you get, and the overall experience and happiness level that you create in your patients. Again, you can get the exact videos that I use, as well as the reminder email templates that I have by going to drjaredcarter.com forward slash episode 24. I love your comments. If you have any questions or comments, drop them below. Let me know what you think about all this. If you have any colleagues or friends that could benefit from this information, please tag them or share this video with them. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next episode.